Well, the second weekend of the 98th Annual State Amateur Baseball Tournament is in full swing. We are live in Hamburg. Next up, it is Chanhassen taking on Chaplin Park. It's going to be a great one, folks. Join us for live action next on PrepSpotlight.tv. Amateur baseball is one of Minnesota's great sporting traditions. The state tournament brings together hundreds of communities in late summer at great ballparks all around the state. Coverage of every game can be found on PrepSpotlight.tv. PrepSpotlight.tv's coverage of today's state tournament game is made possible by the Minnesota Baseball Association. And also with help from the Minnesota Twins. Celebrate Town Ball with the Twins on September 11th. Visit twinsbaseball.com slash townball for details. Now let's get to the ballpark. Welcome to live action in Hamburg. Home of the Hawks and once again the state amateur baseball tournament. Eric Murphy on the call, prepspotlight.tv. Brian Carlson back again. We are here for another game, the final game for us here in the Class B bracket uh, today. And it is Chan Hassan for the second time today. They won earlier, rained out last night, and they won a great game against Rochester 2-1. to They were out hitting that game, but typical of the Redbirds in their three-peat and now quest for a four-peat, able to handle the close game and get by Rochester. As for Champlin, where do I start with the Low Gators? Uh, yesterday, one of the uh, most... Uh, Entertaining games, if you will. We saw it all yesterday, a 12-inning, 3-2 victory. Sam Riola scoring the final run at the bottom of the 12th inning to beat Victoria in just a wild, wild game. And so they, they beat Hampton 1-0 in round one. Then the 3-2 two, three, two victory over Victoria in extra innings yesterday here by the skin of their teeth. And for the first time, the Low Gators and Matt Merrick are here in the uh, third round, the double elimination portion. And these two have met before back in 2019, a 1-0 first round victory for Chan Hassan. So an airtight game there as well. And two well-tested uh, teams. First up is Sam Riola, star player for Champlin. And uh, Sam will be followed by Jack Pooter, then Ethan Monkey, Jeff Hoyer, Ryan Bruns, Bryce Nelson, Reed Conley, Nick Larson in the lineup as a DH, and then Derek Heldman in that nine spot, the DH for Jeff Gooley will be the starting pitcher today. Sam, the batter here, Riola, started first the first two games of the tournament, a complete game shutout in game one against a really good Hampton squad. He actually had uh, a no-hitter through six innings in that game, then battled through the Vicks lineup yesterday. Seven strong innings again for Sam. He has one hit in the tournament, but seemingly involved in about everything, including two plays at the plate yesterday. One where he was uh, called out, and then the game winner as he dove in. It would have been a force play, just a wild play. Bases loaded, infield drawn in. Bruns with the pop-up to short right. It found a space. The throw from right field was close, but Riola gets there and uh, pushes Champlin Park into the third round. And the winner of this game plays Meesville, the Mud Hens, who uh, won the, first, or the, the game prior to this. Uh, the first game of the double elimination portion, and Meesville cruised 8-1 to one over New Market. As Riola to short, diving stop there from Brandon Arnold. Just enough to smother it, so Sam has his second hit of the tournament. Starting things off against Thomas Thompson, the starting pitcher for the Redbirds. So earlier today, John Straka, two-time MVP, the MVP of the uh, state tournament the last two years, and again putting it in an MVP performance Holding down Rochester to one run in a complete game for Straka. Saving Chan Hassan's arms for this contest. Thompson gets the tap from Arnold. And he is 1-0 now on the second hitter in the lineup, Jack Pooter. Pooter, sack fly RBI yesterday in the bottom of the ninth inning, keeping Champlin's season alive. Overall, he was two for four with that RBI. One won the count now. One and two. Kind of an excuse me swing there by Pooter crossed up. So Thompson, 53 and a third, uh, started uh, innings pitch. He started nine games, a 7-0 record. 
The ERA of 2.53. Coming into action here. And swung on and missed. Pooter's taken care of. One down. Champlin in their uh, low gator green uniforms. First time we get to see that is uh, they are the road team on the scoreboard here. Chan in their red tops, the Red Birds. A funny story behind the uniforms. And we'll bring you here as Ethan Mockey steps in. Ethan was the hero game one as he swatted a solo home run over the left field fence. That was the only run in the game against Hampton, helping Rayola to that one nothing shutout victory. Rayola runs. Mockey down the third baseline. Sam will just keep going. He'll trot into third. Actually, he's going to turn third hard. And Merrick's going to hold him, but he keeps going. And Arnold's throw to the plate is not in time. But now they've caught Mockey at second. So we'll be out number two. But welcome to Sam Riola's world, ladies and gentlemen. He blows past the stop sign from Merrick as the throw comes into the shortstop, Arnold. And Sam says, hey, I'm here to play. And now you get a taste of what he brings to the table. Whether he's hitting or pitching, he's a Division I shortstop, a great athlete, and he blew through the stop sign. Slides in ahead of the tag. And again, Maki caught up out there. And he's out at second, but Ethan credited with the RBI single. So it's two outs in the inning now for Jeff Hoyer. Hoyer had five home runs this season. He skies it out to right. And Thompson's out of the inning, but the low Gators strike first, one nothing, after half an inning here in Hamburg. Nobody does high school sports like PrepSpotlight.tv. Your home for Minnesota State tournament action is also where you can find the best weekly action during the regular season in 2021. We make it easy to be a high school sports fan at PrepSpotlight.tv. One nothing lead, Champlin Low Gators jump ahead. Sam Riola lead off single, then scores for first on the Ethan Maki hit down the left side. So a one nothing lead, and it's Jeff Gooley on the mound as Sam Riola presumably not available here today. As he has pitched, uh, pitched deep into the game yesterday, get Champlin into this spot. So Gooley, who relieved Riola, pitched a couple innings yesterday. The lefty comes in. He faces Aaron Path and Brandon Arnold, Michael Jurgella, Zach Huffman, Riley Johnson, Justin Anderson, Jack Nemitz, Aaron Kleppner, and Justin Arnold. Virtually the same lineup that we saw last game for Chan Haas in that 2-1 victory over Rochester. Uh, the big change, obviously, uh, Nemitz catching. And ben Lavorsi not in the lineup to start this game. And it's going to be Aaron Paff coming up first, the leadoff man. Paff, team leader, 43 hits, 37 singles. This year, the New Almite, again, two New Ulm natives in the lineup for Chan Hassan. In fact, Aaron, all tournament team with the New Ulm Brewers back in 2014, the Brew Crew playing tonight in the Class C tournament. First pitch from Gooley is low. And Paff was 0 for 3 with a walk in game one today. Rips that one into left. That's going to get down. Pooter chasing it. He's going to be able to cut it off. Big turn for Paff. Puts on the brakes. And Riola snaps it over to first. Reed Conley 
does his best to get in front of it like a hockey goalie. Riola, this is how he plays. He's gonna he's gonna go 100 miles per hour on everything. So that big turn by Paff draws the throw, and now Aaron trying to walk it off a little bit after that hard turn. And this is this is Chan Hassan baseball 101, by the way. So they fall behind in the top of the first inning. No big deal. Leadoff man comes up, gets a single. And they're going to work right away as Brandon Arnold comes up. Brandon with an RBI single against Rochester, the go-ahead and eventual game-winning RBI. Of course, Brandon, big home run of the championship game last year, and he bunts it to the right side. Gooley gets there, but he can't get it out of his glove in time, and Arnold beats the throw. That's hit number two, so back-to-back -back singles to lead things off. And here's Michael Jurgella. Jugs is his nickname. And Jugs, one for four with a double. He railed a double to the left field, uh, the base of the fence in left field in the first game. So this inning uh, shaping up nicely so far for Chan Hassan. Nobody out and two on. Gooley spins it in there. Scholastica, Division Three pitcher is Gooley. Maki, also a Division Three player, a Gustavus, Ethan Maki, good player, all Mayak player. He's had a good tournament thus far. To one nothing, Champlin leads it, but. Chan is threatening as Jurgella gets into one to left. It's deep, and it is gone, a three-run homer. Chan Assen with the big answer takes the 3-1 lead. Two singles and a three-run jack for Georgella. And Chan, they're falling behind one nothing, Just like that, they lead it three to one. Now it's Zach Huffman, speaking of home runs. Zach jacked one out last week, part of a four RBI night for him. Zach uh, hit in an RBI, had an RBI single in the first game today for Chan. Count is one and one, so Gooley roughed up here, no outs in the inning. And Champlin Park battling hard to get here. First time this far in the tournament, they want to make an impression here, but down early, nice play by Bruns. Speaking of making an impression, Bruns with that Game-winning hit yesterday. He is solid over there at third. Longest 10-year low gator in the lineup. Started with the program in 2007. Champlin established uh, the low gators in 2006. Chan has been around since 2010. Talk about quickly putting together a dynasty. This is Riley Johnson, the center fielder, skying one deep. The infield, Gooley calls everybody off. And a quick two outs now for Gooley after the three-run jack. And Justin Anderson, the DH, will come up. And Justin credited with the longest home run this year for Chan Assen. So if he gets into one, luck out. Gooley, the lefty, shows a lot of movement out there. Talk about the depth and experience on this Chan Hassan squad. Justin Anderson, 
Didn't play last year due to COVID precautions. He was the tournament MVP in 2018. His teammate John Straka, the tournament MVP in 19 and 20. So you've got um, your six hitter in the lineup as your tournament MVP a couple years ago. He's down one and two in the count. Reaches out, wraps that one to Riola. Tough play here, throwing, fading away. He's not going to get there in time. So an infield hit for Justin. A really good hustle by the big man. It's the fourth hit in the inning here for Chan. And it's now the seventh hitter, catcher Jack Nimitz. Again, Ben Lavorsi, the starting catcher in our first game. So Nemitz, Nemitz, by the way, Ben Lavorsi, uh, until he returned, Nemitz was holding things down. So started a lot of games for Chan Hassan this year. Gradu graduated just a couple years ago from Chan Hassan High School. That one out of play. 0-2 count on Nemitz. Swung on and miss. Gooley gets out of it, but the damage done. Jurgella with the three-run jack after one. It's Chan three, the Logators one. Celebrate the end of the 2021 town ball season. Join your teammates, rivals, and ball fans from around the state at the Twins game on September 11th. Special ticket pricing for town ball players and fans. Salutes to the newly crowned champs and a very fun night at the ballpark. Order your tickets at twinsbaseball.com slash townball and wear your town's team colors to Target Field on September 11th. Champlin making noise in the top of the first, but Chan comes right back as they so often do. Michael Jurgella, the three-run home run. And Chan leads it 3-1 after one. Chan trying to wrap up uh, two victories here in one day. Awaiting uh, the winner of this game. In the winner's side of the bracket is Meesville, an 8-1 victory before us here, taking out New Market. The winners play Friday right back here in Hamburg. The losers will play in Waconia. Back-to-back -back games over in Waconia on Saturday. Third baseman Ryan Bruns. The loser Friday drops to the bottom of the bracket and would have to play the next night in Waconia. Fun part of this bracket, double limb. And Ryan Bruns steps in, the third baseman. Saw him make a nice defensive play. Mentioned longest tenure low gator joining the team in 07. There's still two original guys on the roster, not in the lineup, however. So Bruns carrying the mantle. He's the old vet, so to speak, as Bruns over to the right side. Zach Huffman handles it easily. And one out. Bryce Nelson comes up. Bryce was active yesterday. Bryce playing second base today. He started started shortstop the last two games as Riola pitched. Bryce, good athlete. Just had a couple stolen bases yesterday. A run scored. Thompson coming over the top, throwing a little heat there, but it's ball one. 
The Redbirds just two losses this season. And that one back up the middle. Arnold over, makes the throw easily. Two up, two down. They bring up Reed Conley. So Chan just two losses in the regular season, undefeated through region play. Just unbelievable what they've been able to do here in this uh, dynastic run that they've put together in Class B. Mentioned they just started things in 2010. Speaking with uh, the great Denny Laufenberger before the game, he was with us for the game doing the PA earlier today. And we do thank Denny for all the information that he sent us, his passion for the Redbirds on display. As Reed Connolly, it's now 1-1 count on Reed. A 1-1 count, two outs. 3-1, Champlin trailing and at the dish. Reed takes strike two, one and two. But uh, Denny filling us in and how they kind of built it out. Uh, Brandon Arnold started out with Victoria. Brandon, of course, the uh, great Chanhassen High School player. His brother played at Chaska, was a great football player. We'll talk more about him as he comes up. And Thompson takes care of Conley to be continued on how Chan has built the dynasty. They lead it 3-1 after an inning and a half in Hamburg. All summer long, you have gathered with friends, neighbors, and family at ball yards all across Minnesota. Still going, still going, gone, a home run! Diamonds that decorate and help define hundreds of communities. Town Ball binds together our passion for baseball in our hometowns. And on September 11th, the cornerstone of Minnesota baseball, Target Field, will host a party for all those who play, watch, and support Town Ball. The Twins host the Royals at 6.10 p.m. Prior to the game, the newly crowned state amateur champs will be honored at the Town Ball Tavern and during a pregame ceremony. Wear your team colors and enjoy a special night at Target Field. The 0-2 pitch, strike three, Fairmont, state champion in 2020. For tickets to the Twins' tip of the cap to Town Ball on September 11th, Visit twinsbaseball.com slash townball. Move to the bottom of the second inning, and Chan Hassan taking a early 3-1 advantage. Michael Gergelis, three-run home run. Pushing Chad ahead in the first inning. First three reached. Single by Paff, single by Brandon Arnold, an infield single, by the way. And then Jurgella with the three-run homer. The It'll be Aaron Kleppner, followed by Justin Arnold, and then Paff will be back up here in the bottom of the second inning. Here is Kleppner, maybe known more for his basketball prowess, great basketball player at Champlin Park, and now the head coach, by the way, of the basketball team up there. Recently named the head man. Taking over a great program which he was a part of. Started out as a basketball player in college before shifting over to baseball. And he is a very good defensive second baseman, Kleppner is. He was 0 for 3 today's earlier action. It's down 0-2 here to Gooley. That one's low in the dirt, 1-2. and two. Kleppner, a 272 batting average in the regular season. He rips that one to right or left center. Pooter, an all out grab. Wow. And a tip of the hat from Kleppner as Pooter. Maybe the catch of the tournament. We saw a ton of great catches last week, but none better than that. Pooter obviously showing off some range from his center field position. 
Wow. Now it's Justin Arnold, Brandon's younger brother, mentioned uh, a Chaska grad. So Brandon went to Chanhassen. Nice rivalry between those two. And uh, Justin, a great football player, went to Mankato and was a star player for the Mavericks. As he hits that one near the gap, Pooter goes the other way. Makes this one look a little bit easier. Two flyouts to open the inning, and now it's back to the top of the order. Aaron Paff. So Chan, 27 and 2 this season, coming into the tourney. And here they are. They went unblemished in last year's run. It was close, a lot of close games throughout. In fact, their largest margin of victory, just two runs when they took out Moorhead in round one, the Mudcats, that is, eight to one. Snuck by Rochester, two to one in round two. Oh, that one got away from Gooley, so Paff wears it on the back. He's on for the second time in as many innings. Now batting shortstop, Brandon Arnold. And now it's Brandon Arnold's turn. And Brandon reaching on that close play at first. Both he and Paff scoring on the three-run homer from Georgiella. Brandon, the uh, player manager of the squad, two years running now for him. Mentioned uh, the Chan Asson High School grad, a very highly regarded athlete coming from Chan Asson, male athlete of the year in his graduating year, which I believe was 2012. And they went through uh, some coaching changes there. And on, you know, after his final year, he was, he was on a committee to help hire the new coach. And he's still in education, part of the uh, Jordan School Districts. And that one gets away from Maki, so Pafu was running on the play. We'll go into second, standing up. Two outs, runner in scoring position now for Arnold, a 2-0 count. And by the way, uh, speaking of Chaska and Chan, so Brandon also uh, coaches in the uh, the uh, Chaska Hawks system in the high school team, an assistant coach there. So heavily involved in the communities over there as he fouls that one back two and one the count. Brandon, great player at St. Cloud State. And part of why there are a couple of Huskies on this roster. He's got that St. Cloud State pipeline. So the 2-1 pitch, driven to left. That's going to get down. Paff running on the play. He'll score easily. An RBI single from Arnold. And the top of the order for Chan Hassan produces in the first two innings. It's a 4-1 lead for the Birds. That will be the third baseman, Michael Gergella. And now you get Gergella. We mentioned a couple times the three-run homer just an inning ago. Comes up with another runner on. Two outs this time. One run in in the inning. Gergella. Another St. Cloud State Husky. Played all over the diamond for them this year. Third baseman here so far in the tournament. He's played second. He's played first. That's going to be a tough play. Rayola gets over there. He's just going to have to eat it. So another hit. Deep into the hole for Gergella. So he's two for two. And it's first and second. Two outs. Better is first baseman, Zach Hoffman. Zach Hoffman's turn, grounded out to third. Bruns made that nice play on him last inning. Mentioned the uh, home run in game one for Zach. Play maybe on at second. As Gooley with the long stare, staring back Arnold and then Hoffman finally calls timeout. Yeah. 
Jack and the all-tournament team in 17 and 18. This time, Maki gets in front of it. Want to know the count to Huffman? Two outs, two on. Huffman rails that one into center. Pooter runs it down like a deer in center field. So Gooley gets out of it, only giving up one run, but Chan tacks on another. 4 1, they lead it after two, live in Hamburg on PrepSpotlight.tv. The town ball tour. Head to the small towns and tell people what it's all about. A lot of excitement. Weather is fantastic. This place has been here since the early 80s. This is a baseball town. The town is here. The kids are here. It's safe. It's a wonderful environment. We certainly met some wonderful characters. Thanks for joining us for another season of Fox 9's Town Ball Tour. Inside bedrooms and outside sleeping areas. Test smoke alarms every month. Never leave food cooking unattended. Make a fire escape plan with your family. If a fire occurs in your home, get out, stay out, and call for help. Follow the Waconia Fire Relief on Facebook to stay up to date on events and fire prevention channels. Chaplin will be the designated hitter, Nick Larson. Nick Larson steps in for Chaplin. Nick with a pinch hit opportunity yesterday in that crazy game against Victoria. Did not see action in game one. He's our DH, DHing for Gooley today. Takes strike one from Thompson. So Nick, the big bearded DH. Lefty swinging. And before I got, I got sidetracked earlier, but um, so the Low Gators in these sweet green uniforms, so they actually ordered these uniforms and then got the wrong color. Kind of a, a funny tweet sent out by Champlin earlier this summer. And they were actually, they were a blue color as Larson grounds out to Kleppner at second. And Derek Heldman will come up. Derek had an eventful day yesterday as well. Uh, but just to finish the thought on the uniforms, a, a funny tweet sent out. Uh, you know, they said, so it said, good news, new uniforms are in, bad news, they're the wrong color. And uh, looking at the bright side, Matt Merrick thinking, well, maybe maybe we have an opportunity for another uh, uniform set. And I, I didn't ask him before the game if they, in fact, wore those blue uniforms at any point this year. But uh, looking good here today in the, the road greens, if you will, as it's one and one to Heldman. So Heldman, one for four with a run scored. And um, in the bottom of the ninth inning, with Champlin down two to one, they scored the second run without even getting a hit. So Matt Merrick, a uh, pinch hit for Heldman, took one off the back on the first pitch. They re-enter Heldman as a pinch runner. 2-1 pitch. Taken for a strike, 2-2. Two and two. And uh, Sam Riola hit a rocket to short. That was caught. The throw to first was spiked, however, out of play. And Heldman was awarded third. He would score then on a Pooter RBI, sack fly RBI. And that is how Champlin manufactured a run without a hit in the bottom of the ninth inning to keep their season alive, eventually winning it in 12 innings. So Heldman has set an eventful day from the uh, nine spot in the lineup. He's quick, a good fielder. He was actually a DH for in the first game, but proving his worth in the lineup yesterday. Full count 
from Thompson. And he kind of just swats at that one. Huffman drifts out of play over to make the catch. And there are two outs to bring us back to the top of the lineup to Sam Riola. Riola mentioned him early and uh, such a great athlete, not recruited out of high school, started at Bethel and then uh, made his way down to Louisiana Lafayette where he was the starting shortstop at the beginning of the year, then, then hurt his hand and he was out until conference tournament time when he came back as a pitcher. Phenomenal athlete. Big strike one, swinging through it from Thompson. And just seemingly involved in everything. He's all over the place. And has really turned into a great pitcher. And the best fielding pitcher that we've seen in this tournament. A shortstop here today. One on one count. He is uh, also the single season leader in all time hits for Champlain. He had 60 hits this year, five home runs. So he can flat out get it done. Struggled in the opening game against Hampton. Took an 0 for 4. Just one hit yesterday. But again, involved in those two plays at the plate. And uh, involved in scoring the one run for Champlin here so far today. Knocks that one out of play to the right. Two and two the count. Got to mention that um, Coach Merrick, who did a, just such a great job with the write-up for his team, thanked him for that before the game, did, did mention in his notes that uh, Derek Heldman, by his estimation, the fastest player in the Metro Mini. And Champlin won for the first time in club history this year. Also won sections for the first time. Riola swings and misses the strikeout of Thompson. The Chaplin kept off the board for the second straight inning. Bird still lead at 4-1. to one. Nobody does high school sports like PrepSpotlight.tv. Your home for Minnesota State tournament action is also where you can find the best weekly action during the regular season in 2021. We make it easy to be a high school sports fan at PrepSpotlight.tv. Johnson will lead us off in the bottom of the third inning. Chan Asson with three runs in the first, one run in the second. They've jumped on Champlin starter Jeff Gooley. Jerry Gooley, actually. Sorry, Jerry. Probably called you Jeff a couple times here today. But Jerry, the lefty. Gets a strike one call on Riley. Riley Johnson flew out to the infield last time. Gooley caught it. And again, Riley uh, 0 for 2 in the first game with a walk. Manning the center field position for Chan. A foul ball here. It was close. 1 and 2 the count. This time of the day, extremely hard for us to see the the ball off that surface. From our angle here through the net. 
Some shadows starting to creep in in left field. Gooley goes outside, can't get him to chase, two and two. Riley Johnson out of Augustana. Didn't play in the tournament last year. He was with the team, but out due to injury. And another Champlin Park graduate, by the way, in Kleppner. Riley drills that one toward the gap. Pooter tracking, gets over into the shadows to make the catch. After the great catch we saw last inning from Pooter, you're going to have to do a lot more to get it by him out there. So Justin Anderson, the DH, who singled his first time up. Ball one from Gooley. So Champlin building it to this point. Lost in uh, super sections in 13. Then lost to Moorhead, the Brew Crew, in the first round back in 16. and 17 lost to Meesville, who went on to win the state title. Lost 7-1 to in that game. Then lost to Northfield in the first round. Then in 19, we mentioned the Chanhassen the last time these two met. In the tournament back in 19, a one nothing first round win for the Redbirds. And they, of course, went on to win the title. And last year, Champlin got by the first round, taking out Victoria, then losing to Meesville in round two. So that victory yesterday over Victoria is special for this club as they continue to take steps. It just fouls. Bruns got to it and was ready to fire his way to first. Two and two count now. On Anderson. Two two pitch from Gooley. It's low in the dirt, Maki. Smothers, three and two. That one drilled towards center. Pooter taking strides to get over there. So working both sides once again out there is Pooter. And he's been a busy man. Two outs in the inning. Jack Nimitz struck out in the first inning. So ball one from Gooley. Strike one as it's hit out of play. Another one just fouled down the line, one and two. Most of the makeup of this Champlain uh, Park squad, by the way, Blaine High School and Coon Rapids High School graduates. Think of the talent up there, that Metro Mini. Coon Rapids, a really good team. Anoka was in the tournament this year, all in that packed-in area. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Again, foul. But uh, a big part of that was the transition that Champlin had to make. As Merrick uh, explained it to us. Get a bunch of younger guys. They grabbed a couple Blaine kids as there weren't any Brooklyn Park players available due to uh, a new town ball team up there, the Norsemen, who then folded eventually. 
But at the, the time of transition for Champlin, plucked a couple kids from Blaine, and the next thing you know, a couple more and a couple more, and that is, um, now you have 10 Blaine kids on this roster. As Nemitz works his way back and earns the walk, so he trots down to first. And it's uh, Aaron Kleppner. Speaking of Champlin Park, Kleppner, the Champlin Park native. Or Champlin Park um, high school graduate, I should say. To third, Bruns vacuums it up, throws over to Conley. So Gooley works a clean inning after three, still 4-1 Redbirds. Celebrate the end of the 2021 town ball season. Join your teammates, rivals, and ball fans from around the state at the Twins game on September 11th. Special ticket pricing for town ball players and fans. Salutes to the newly crowned champs and a very fun night at the ballpark. Order your tickets at twinsbaseball.com slash townball and wear your town's team colors to Target Field on September 11th. Four seven zero 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 one, or find us online at Advanced Electrical Services MN dot com. To the fourth inning in Hamburg, Thomas Thompson getting the start for Chan Hass and John Strock of the Hero in Game One. Seemed to get stronger as the game went on and stays in for all nine innings. A two one victory over Rochester. Thompson tad with the. Second start here of the day for Chan Hassan. Chan obviously with a uh, great bullpen. Spitzak, Nablo down there. And didn't have to use any of those guys in the last game. As Jack Puder comes up. Jack, uh, UMD Duluth player. Showing some serious range out there in center field. He struck out his first time up against Thompson. Comes up swinging, fouled away. So Thompson, by the way, another Chan graduate, another young guy, 2019. Is that one? Goes to the right side, Kleppner up with it and throws it to Huffman for the out. And also a family connection with uh, the Thompsons and the Arnolds. So his brother-in-law, Brandon and Justin. It's his sister, Emily, married uh, Brandon, just Brandon, rather. Not uh, both of them. His sister, Emily, married Brandon last November. So Thompson brother-in-law is with Brandon Arnold. Nice little family connection. And by the way, uh, another St. Cloud State connection. That is where Thomas also uh, played college. One and one count on Ethan Mockey now, the catcher for Champlin. Singled his first time up. And RBI single at that, and he goes right back up the middle. So two at bats, two hits for Ethan. His bat is, his bat is hot, two. Two of the three hits, courtesy of the uh, Champlin catcher, and that'll bring up Jeff Hoyer. Hoyer, a St. Cloud State player. In his college days, now here in the four spot in the lineup 
for this Champlin Park Logator squad. Five home runs on the air, tied with the team lead with Riola. Swats at that one, goes to second. Kleppner to Arnold, and the relay to Huffman. The 4-6-3 double play. Champlin erased in the top of the fourth. And Chan remains in control with a 4-1 lead. All summer long, you have gathered with friends, neighbors, and family at ball yards all across Minnesota. Still going, still going, gone, a home run! Diamonds that decorate and help define hundreds of communities. Tonball binds together our passion for baseball in our hometowns. And on September 11th, the cornerstone of Minnesota baseball, Target Field, will host a party for all those who play, watch, and support town ball. The Twins host the Royals at 6.10 p.m. Prior to the game, the newly crowned state amateur champs will be honored at the Town Ball Tavern and during a pregame ceremony. Wear your team colors and enjoy a special night at Target Field. The 0-2 pitch. Strike three! Fairmont! State champion in 2020! For tickets to the Twins' tip of the cap to Town Ball on September 11th, Visit twinsbaseball.com slash townball. Bottom four, leading us off, Justin Arnold. Number nine hitter in the lineup, flew out to center field his first time up. Leading off for the Redbirds, right fielder Justin Arnold. Justin now works for the Adam Thielen training programs, by the way. Connection there, those two both. Played at uh, Minnesota State Mankato, and he rips that one to the gap in left center. Altman getting over, cutting it off. And that'll hold Arnold to a single, a leadoff single for the Birds. The and hit number seven, back to Aaron Paff. He's been a busy man already. Paff lit off the game with a single. Later scored on their Jurgella three-run jack. Hit by pitch, stolen base, and then scored on the Brandon Arnold RBI single in the second inning. So Paff, I'm going to keep things moving here. Nobody out and one on. Showing bunt. Maki can't find it. Arnold dancing a bit off first. That's in there for a strike, so one and one the count on the Birds leadoff man. Maki doing a good job getting in front of that one. That one was bounced a few feet in front of him. So two on the count on path. A little quieter here tonight. And a huge crowd for that Meesville New Market game. And the pitch is low, so it's now 3-1. Champlin uh, does have movement in the bullpen. Matt Merrick probably wanted to keep this as close as he possibly can. Three one pitch, swung on, driven to right. It's pushing Heldman back, does get underneath it, quickly getting it in. So out number one. Batting with one away, shortstop, Brandon Arnold. Now Brandon Arnold, the shortstop player manager for Chan Hassan. As mentioned, brother in law of Thompson the pitcher. 
Brennan also been busy here. Two singles, a run scored, and an RBI. Can't tell who's warming up in the bullpen. I think it's Charlie Hutchinson for Champlin Park. Another lefty out there. And there's the bunt down the line, and it just goes foul about halfway down. So again, that's uh, Arnold trying to bunt for a hit there. By no means looking to sacrifice. Jim Brandon with the one hit, the RBI. And the run scored in the uh, first game against Rochester. Done more than that in his first two at bats here against Champlin. Bottom four, four to one, and there's another hit. Three for his first three for Arnold. The Arnold brothers on first and second. With just one out, and it's Michael Gergella. That is eight hits now. Probably not too far off. Depending on how things play out here, obviously, from seeing... The next left-hander out of the bullpen for Champlin. There's Georgella ripping one towards center. Pooter on his horse. And a near collision. In fact, they do collide. And Pooter somehow comes up with the catch. Another great play by Pooter out there. Wow, that could have been bad. As he and Hoyer out there, Hoyer goes low. And Pooter somehow makes the grab. And scooting up to third on the play is Arnold. So an interesting play there. Goes in as a sack fly for Jurgella. And Zach Huffman now up. He's 0 for 2. Jim Huffman, along with Paff, uh, the New Alm natives on this squad. And Paff, former New Alm Brewer. Zach's brother, JT, on the New Ulm Brewers, who are playing tonight. So not sure if the Huffman family is here, and then they'll scoot over to Waconia for that late game. That game was uh, rained out as Gooley catches Brandon Arnold off first. It's Justin coming home. Good throw by Riola. Of course it is, as he guns him out at home. Maki standing in the perfect spot as Riola throws a strike. That's out number three. So the Birds kept off the board in the fourth, but they still lead it 4-1 to one from Hamburg. The town ball tour, head to the small towns and tell people what it's all about. A lot of excitement, weather is fantastic. This place has been here since the early 80s. This is a baseball town. The town is here, the kids are here. It's safe, it's a wonderful environment. We certainly met some wonderful characters. Thanks for joining us for another season of Fox 9's Town Ball Tour. Move on to the fifth inning. Champlin Park behind 4-1 to one and a heads-up play by Sam Riola once again involved in a big play. Runners on first and third. It was the Arnold brothers and Brandon caught off first by Gooley. So the throw over to first, then down to Riola 
covering at second and trying to take home on the play before the tag was made. So remember, if uh, Justin Arnold scores on that play before they tag out Brandon, that run counts. So a heads-up play by Sam Riola throws a perfect strike to the dish. Ethan Mocky tagged out Justin for the third out. It's the little things. Part of the reason Champlin, for the first time, moving this far into the bracket. An uphill battle here today, though, against Jan Hassan. Nick Champlin, that nail-biter in round one against Hampton, and then yesterday's 12-inning game against Victoria trailed for the majority of the contest and a lot of close plays, some controversial. Ryan Bruns taking his hacks right now against Thompson. Bruns flew out his first time up, 0-2 pitch. Fouled back. One, two count now. You know, I actually had that mistaken on the um, player in the lineup, and that's because Nick Larson, along with Ryan Udis, who is also on the roster, Ryan not here for the tournament, but obviously Nick is. He's in the lineup today, so Nick takes the crown is the longest tenured. He was on the original 06 team. Nick was. We saw him pinch hit yesterday. He's in the lineup as a DH today. So apologize for that oversight, Nick. As you officially have the crown as the veteran, the key veteran on Champlin's squad today. As that one is lifted to center and coming in and making the catch. Is Riley Johnson sliding to his knees for out number one? Bryce Nelson, the second baseman today, comes up. He grounded out his first time up. So Chan had to play this morning, so they get the back-to-back -back, uh, games for them here today. They're being rained out. It's Rochester. The teams were actually here. We had the lineup cards in hand, but then they called it looking at the radar. Obviously the right call. Would have never gotten that thing in after the uh, storms finally showed up. Games at all locations actually suspended and moved to the, uh, the night spots here tonight. That one fought off toward the right side. Can another play be made? No. Now getting back to first quickly is Nelson. So we'll see how they score that as that was Justin Arnold out there. Good effort. After the single by Nelson, the batter will be... And they'll give a single to Nelson. So one on and one out. Reed Conley who struck out his first time comes to the plate. Good effort out there from Justin. Just could not come up with it. <laughs> Quick move by Thompson. Young just able to get back. Conley. Couple hits in the first game against Hampton. And that's saying a lot in that game. There weren't a lot of hits to go around. Conley rips one into left. Scooting up to second is Nelson and Champlin. 
piecing something together here with one out in the top of the fifth inning. Back-to-back -back singles now. Batter will be the designated hitter, Nick Larson. And now it's Nick Larson. Now oh, big Nick. One for two in the tourney. Fly out yesterday, grounded out his first time up here. Stepping into the DH role. Oh, Nick swinging away, fouls that one back. Takes a ball, one and one. Nick um, also could play first base if needed. But in the DH where he is mostly used. One one pitch, jumps all over that one. Tomahawks it out, the fence and right, one and two the count. Now making Thompson work a bit here in the fifth inning. That one in the dirt, aggressive running by Nelson, as well as Conley. So Conley obviously not the swiftest of feet, but he is a smart base runner. We've seen that here in the tournament. Scoots down to second, second and third now. Still just one out. Opportunity for Larson with two in scoring position now, two and two the count. He swats at that one, it's gonna be shallow center field. Johnson coming in, setting up to throw, tagging but not coming all the way through on a great toss from Riley center fielder. Strong throw, he set that up the whole way. So Larson with a fly out to center, runner stayed second and third, and it's now up to Derek Heldman, the number nine hitter in the lineup. He flew out his first time up. Popped out to Huffman out of play. First pitch is high. So for your Chan, could shape up be exactly how you'd want to play it here. You get the complete game effort from Straka in game one. Thompson battling away here in a big spot. Is that one is swatted at Thompson. Trying to get there, he can't. Kleppner can't get there either. One run is in. Conley stops at third. It'll be an RBI. Infield single for the nine man, Derek Heldman. And manufacturing a run as Nelson scoots home first and third now, two outs. Champlin chews into the lead a bit here, 4 2. So, as I was saying, you get innings out of Thompson, you've got a well rested bullpen. And a good one at that. You'll have to play till next week. Your ace be fresh and ready to go. If Champlin can stay in the winner's bracket, but a precarious situation now is you have Sam Riola coming to the plate. In Sam, the top hitter in the Metro Mini Conference. His presence already felt in this game in a couple different ways, scoring that first run. Strike one, one and one the count. And also made that stellar defensive play to cut down Justin Arnold and preserve a run. One, one pitch from Thompson. Valeriola, who was trying to call time, I think. And now the Chan crowd getting a little vocal. Now 
Going to pick up the energy levels a little bit here. Runner goes, Riola swings. Sam not happy with himself there. Count is even at two. Big uh, spot, first and third. Two outs, Riola to center. It'll get down, one run in. Holding at second is Heldman. And Sam has his hitting shoes on today. RBI single, the low Gators back within a run. Riola fired up. That'll be the center fielder, Jack Puder. He knocks in a run, so a run scored. Now an RBI for Riola. And Jack Puder stepping in. Sweet swinging lefty. Who has been putting in a defensive masterpiece in center field so far here today. Comes up hacking on the first pitch, fouled back. Jack is struck out and grounded out in this game. Thompson trying to work around the trouble. And that's to the gap, and it's going to get down. Heldman, the fastest guy in the Metro Mini, is going to score easily. Does Rayola push the issue again? The big stop sign put up by Merrick. And Sam does hold as he screams across the diamond to Pooter, his teammate, after Jack ties things up, an RBI single. And it's still runners at first and third with two outs. And a big stick coming up in Ethan Maki. RBI single back in the first for Ethan. He also singled in the fourth. And now Chan Hassan's bullpen is going to get busy. Logan Spitzak, not surprising to see him go down. He warmed up a couple times in the first game. So Maki up at a big spot, two outs, still first and third. First pitch swinging, skied to right center. And it's Johnson taking care of it out there, but Champlin rallies for three in the top of the fifth. We are tied 4-4, live state amateur action on PrepSpotlight.tv. For summary for Chaplin Park, three runs, five hits. No we'll send you to Class A highlights from last week, our live action on PrepSpotlight.tv, packaged up in this highlight package. Enjoy, and we'll be back with the bottom of the fifth right after this. Near free catcher. Slaps one in the air to left. Carrying deep, Fleming to the fence, to the wall. Gone! A three-run home run for Pierce. That ball just kept carrying and carrying over the fence. And Air Freight's opened it up here in the fifth. And this one hit high and deep to left. This one way out of here. 6-0 Air Freight. A bomb by Cummings. Since then, a couple of ground outs to third. He hammers one high in the air to center field. Scallon back, has it measured. That's it! Air Freight Unlimited, your Class A state champions. They win their 21st game of the year. They dominate the championship game. Rally time for Champlin in the top of the fifth. Five hits, including RBI singles from Heldman, Riola, and Puder. They piece it together, tying things up at four now as we head to the bottom of the fifth inning. 
And Zach Hoffman will lead things off. Zach standing at the plate. And the last time up as he sees the first pitch from Gooley and the high fly to Nelson at second. So one pitch and one out for Gooley. Batting with one away, the center fielder, Riley Johnson. Bring up Riley Johnson. He was active in the field last inning. Great range out there in center. Showed off a pretty good arm there as well. But uh, Hoffman let off the inning. He was standing there after the Arnold was cut down at home. In the steal attempt in the fourth inning, so he let us off. A fly out, and now it's Johnson's turn. 1-1 one, one the count. Gooley's still battling. Hutchinson still warming in the bullpen just in case. That one is wrapped toward Bruns, and it makes its way through the third baseman. Hellman gets it in quick, but E5 on Brunzi. Better will be the designated hitter, Justin Anderson. Now Justin Anderson comes to the plate. Singled in the first, flew out in the third. Anderson is a show Pretty good speed, actually, in the base pass. Showed it off in that first game against Rochester as well. Hustling for his first hit earlier today. That one to the right side, get out of play. So Arnold, no two hole here. Oh, two pitch from Gooley. It's high, one and two. So Champlin able to breathe new life into this contest. Took that one nothing lead in the top of the first, but Jurgella's three run homer. It looked like Chan was going to be off and running. Champlin rallies for three in the top of the fifth. Tie it up. That one was close. Called a ball, two and two. Riley Johnson on first after the error at third from Bruns. <laughs> Bruns gets another chance, makes the play here, goes to second, and the ball's dropped, so he's safe. Nelson couldn't hold on. We've got another error. Will they charge it to Brunsey's the question? Yes, they will. Back-to-back E5s. And just like that, Champlin's got two on with one out. And Gooley's going to have to work around it here. As Jack Nemitz comes up, Jack struck out and walked so far today. Comes up swinging, strike one. And running to third and caught stealing. After the, uh, what would we call that a delayed steal? Not delayed. He just tried to take the base on him. Riley just took off, just flat out took off. Not sure he was hoping to catch Champlin sleeping there, but Gooley definitely was not paying attention to him. Did a good job to throw a strike over there, so out number two. 
That takes a little bit of pressure off Gooley. One and one the count now to Nemitz. They caught stealing going down to the book for Johnson. A rare play there from Chan Hassan. They don't make many mistakes. That's why they win so many close games. Strike two in there, one and two the count. Mentioned Chan perfect through the bracket last year. A lot of close ball games, but made it through. As that one is driven to right. Calling it and making the play out there is Hoyer. Out number three, Gooley works out of the jam. And through five, we're tied at four in Hamburg. No runs on no hits. Hey, folks, time is winding down to be a part of the 2021 State Amateur Baseball Tournament in Waconia, Chaska, and Hamburg. Get out and support your community or... If you just love the game of baseball and want to watch win or go home games at fantastic venues, there's nothing like tourney time. If you can't make it to the games, prepspotlight.tv slash townball has all the games at affordable prices. Enjoy the tournament at the park or right here on prepspotlight.tv. Paid attendance was 447, 447. Thank you for your support. Leading off for the Low Gators, right fielder Jeff Hoyer. Jeff Hoyer leads us off in the top of the sixth inning for the Low Gators, who've made it a new ball game here, rallied for three last inning. Thomas Thompson back out, nothing in to work for Chan Assen. And Hoyer to center, Johnson coming in, sliding and making another grab. Chan, stellar defensive team. Showing wise, Riley Johnson comes up, makes the play. And uh, defensive change, Ben Lavorsi's entered the game. Placing Jack Nemitz. And the game one starter here today. For Chan, and that win over Rochester earlier. So getting a little bit of a break. Enters midway through the game here. Now it's Bruns. And Ryan down to the third base side, but foul. 0-2 is the count. Ryan has flown out twice here. Ryan with a tough inning in the field. He's a good defensive player out there. But hey, when you're playing third, it's tough to maintain play after play. So two errors for him, but they survive it. And he hangs here, 0-2. Ryan batted last inning. He was the leadoff guy last inning, that big inning for Champlin. He flew out to start things off over to third. Scooped up the throw over to Huffman. Good play there by Jurgella. And there are two outs in the inning. Now it's Bryce Nelson. He got things started last inning with that single. So he's one for two on the day, later scored. That one swung out of the first pitch. 
Ranging out is Kleppner, and wow, popped out and then able to hold on to it. Showing off that great defense over there. So Chan, a good defensive inning, and they fly through the six. We're still knotted at four as we head to the bottom half here, live on PrepSpotlight.tv. Now we're going to leave you with tournament action highlights um, from the B and C tournament from earlier this weekend. Enjoy. We'll be back with the bottom of the six right after this. One, two pitch. Hammer towards short and into left field. And they're going to send the runner. Throw comes in. It'll be cut off. Redbirds regain the lead. Line past the drawn in infield for an RBI hit. One runner will score. The second runner being waved home. He'll score standing up. Here in the ninth. This one into left field for a hit. That'll score one. Throw comes all the way through. Runner down to second. Throw. They got the runner hung up. Throw to the plate. Not in time. Bluffton towards second by the second baseman. Bresnahan got a glove on it. Runner around third. Headed for the plate. Throw cut off. 3-1 Braves. This one he hasn't so far. This one high and deep to left field. Going back, and that's gone. A home run, a two-run blast for Caleb Manneke. Some of that game action there was actually from earlier today. Credit our editors back in our studios for throwing that together for us. Hope you enjoyed that. Back to game action here in Hamburg, Class B tournament. We're in the third round. Winner here plays Meesville right back here in Hamburg on Friday night. We got a 4-4 game. And it's Kleppner leading things off for uh, Chanhassen. Aaron is 0 for 2 here today. Made a nice defensive play to end the inning. In the top of the sixth. 2 1 count as Jerry Gooley still on the mound out there for the Gators. Hutchinson stays loose in the bullpen. Gooley just gutting this thing out. Lee and Thompson both. 3 1 count now. You would think Hutchinson is warm at this point. So Merrick could. Make the move any time he would need to. Pooter's going to have to come in to make the play here. He will not get there. Kleppner drops in the leadoff single in the bottom of the sixth inning. That breaks the tie on hits as well. Talk about even on the scoreboard. Four runs apiece, eight hits apiece up until that point. That's the ninth hit for Chanassen. Only separation there are the two errors for Champlin. Two errors that did not lead to any runs. Gonna bring up Justin Arnold. He singled his last time up, an eventful inning for Justin. Made his way to third, and then as his brother Brandon was picked off a of first, he tried to take home the idea there, score before they tag Brandon, and the run counts, and he was cut down by Riola. Made a heads-up play and a strike to home, cutting him down easily. 0-1 after the failed bunt attempt. We'll see if they do it again. Arnold this time pops it up. Maki dives but cannot come up with the play. Great effort by the big man. He now saunters back to his position with a big smile on his face. A little uh, conversation with the umpire. Got to this point in this tournament where you're surprised when you don't see a great defensive highlight. And the great athletes out there in the tournament. It's an 0-2 count, by the way, to Arnold. Swung on and missed, and down goes Justin. And the snap throw to first, safe over there is Kleppner. But a huge strikeout. 
for Gooley. And now we go to the top of the order. Aaron Paff comes to the dish. Aaron reached in his first two at-bats a single. He was hit. Got a stolen base, two runs scored. Gooley bends that one in there for strike one. Swung on a miss. Good pitch from Gooley. That one just kept fading to the corner. And it dropped out of sight for Paff. All he could do was wave at that one. So 0-2 the count. One out. Lead off single from Kleppner. He's on first. Goes right back to that same pitch. Riola reaches up, grabs it. Can he double him off at first? Not in time. But it's Sam making another great play. Timed that jump perfectly, and you knew he was going to fire to first. Kleppner scooting back. Two outs in the inning. Now Brandon Arnold, the dangerous Brandon Arnold. Three for three here today. Mentioned in the first game against Rochester today, in the elimination game. He had a big RBI single, and chasing it in the left field corner is Heldman. He holds on as he bangs into the fence. Are you kidding me? What a play. And the defense again on display as Champlin gets through the inning. We're still tied for a piece after six in Hamburg. Hey folks, time winding down to be a part of the 2021 State Amateur Baseball Tournament in Waconia, Chaska, and right here in Hamburg. Get out and support your community, or if you just love the game of baseball and want to watch win or go home games at fantastic venues, there is nothing like tourney time. If you can't make it to the games, prepspotlight.tv backslash townball has all the games at affordable prices. Enjoy the tourney at the park or right here with us on prepspotlight.tv. Eric Murphy with you here on the call. Uh, B. Carlson on camera. Been working these games now for two weekends in Hamburg. We've uh, taken hold of this Class B bracket out here, Meesville, an 8 1 victory. Moving on in the winner's bracket, New Market. A loser in that game drops down to the loser's game next week in Waconia. Winners, losers of this contest fall in line. Meesville looking very good so far. They are really a complete team this year. They are a major threat, perhaps bring home a title. Of course, these two teams battling it out would have something to say about that, including the three-time defending champ, Janass and Redbirds, who survived earlier today against Rochester. And Champlin surviving yesterday against Victoria. And as Reed Conley taps that right back to Thompson on the mound. Thomas takes care of it for the easy out. Batting with one away, the designated hitter, Nick Larson. Now it's Nick Larson's turn. Spitzak continues to get loose, by the way, in the Chanhassen bullpen. Again, uh, I would describe it as gutting it out for both pitchers here. They've hung in there. There are hits on the board. In fact, Chan approaching double digits and eight hits up for Champlin. No one pitch to Larson. He rips that one into right, but it's right at Arnold. And Justin hauls it in for out number two. So Derek Aldman, who has the catch of the day, and that's saying something considering um, 
Well, I guess we'd have to go back and, and probably have the viewers vote on it. Pooter had a phenomenal catch in center field earlier. But I would say the degree of difficulty with a chain link fence staring you in the face, well, maybe Derek gets the nod there. He banged into the left field fence over there, making the third out in the bottom of the sixth. Derek continues to have a, a good tournament. He's got a hit in this game as well. Some speed on the base pass, scored in the fifth inning. He's down 1-2, though, as Thompson's working quickly here in the seventh. Thompson loses his hat. Goes down and gets that one. Ball two to Heldman, 2-2. Two two. Staying alive. Count remains two and two. Shadows moving in in the outfield. This time at night. It's past six o'clock here in Hamburg. Outside, count is full. Thompson again losing his hat, perhaps throwing a little extra. Maybe knowing that it's time on the mound here, coming to an end. Letting loose a little bit here. Full count to Heldman. Swung on and held on by Lavorsi. So the one, two, three inning from Thompson. It's 4-4. Chan coming to bat when we come back. Nobody does high school sports like Prep Spotlight TV. Your home for Minnesota State tournament action is also where you can find the best weekly action during the regular season in 2021. We make it easy to be a high school sports fan at PrepSpotlight.tv. Baseman Michael Gergella. Michael Gergella leading us off. He's got the loudest hit of the day probably here. Three-run home run back in the first inning. Also has a single and a sack fly, so good day for Michael as he is two for two. Digging in against Gooley, big swing here. Swings through it for the first strike. Gooley back out for the seventh inning where Sam Riola has pitched the majority of the innings here for Champlin, including that complete game shutout in game one. Gooley picked up a little action yesterday in helping that victory over Victoria. Jack Herring went four to get the victory for Champlin. Still some arms out there. We saw Charlie Hutchinson getting loose for a couple innings. We think he would be the next out of the bullpen for Champlin. 
Action right now in Chanhassen's bullpen as well. Have we seen the, lo the last of Thomas Thompson? Ian Gooley gutting it out here. And a really nice matchup. Nine one golf to the left side, two and two. Count remains. <laughs> two two pitch from Gooley. That one ripped to left. Does Heldman have another highlight play in him? He won't have a chance. And Dragella's feeling it with the power here today. He bounces that one out of the park. That's into the uh, neighborhood across the street. Souvenir without ever having to come to the game. 2-2 two -two again. Inside, 3-2. and two. Tough matchup. Jagella has been here today for Gooley. He's trying to work around the big slugger here. And that one's low, ball four. So Jagella adds to his total base count here as Redbirds hard to the lineup is up. Well, the ever dangerous Zach Huffman, he is 0 for 3 today. And Zach with the RBI single earlier today against Rochester. Four RBIs in the game one victory over Moorhead. First pitch is high, ball one. So if you're Matt Merrick, what kind of decisions do you have to make here? Your team squarely back into this thing, trying to keep it close. Gooley works again through this dangerous part of the lineup. One on with nobody out. One one to count to Zach. Swatted toward third. Bruns scoops, throws, and it skips into right field. Georgella. Easily to third base, so it's first and third now with nobody out. And they've done this all without a hit. The third error on the day on Bruns. And, and now a tough situation for Champlin. Merrick comes out. Will he make the move? He doesn't have Hutchinson following him in into the game from the dugout, so perhaps just a little conversation piece here. <laughs> Meeting on the mound, talking things over. And what is Chan going to do here? And Riley Johnson do up next. He's reached one time on an error, flown out the other two times. But good speed, good bat. And they try to have some kind of action in play here. A long conference on the mound. Derek Roberts, the uh, home plate umpire, comes out to break it up. First pitch to Johnson's outside. This game comes to a snail's pace now as Johnson rips it past Riola. It's actually off of his glove, trickles into left field, and the go-ahead run 
trots home in the form of Jurgella. So the walk in the air come back to bite the Gators as the Birds regain the lead. We'll have a runner now for Zach Hoffman. Miller Drush will come in to uh, run. Pronouncing it Drush on the PA, so we'll go with that. Noah, by the way, uh, Brandon Arnold's cousin, a Farmington High School graduate, so Chan, talent from all over the Metro, so there's still nobody out here, first and second. And Justin Anderson, the dangerous DH at the dish. One oh count here from Gooley, and it's outside. Two and oh. Ball three. So Gooley can't find the strike zone. That's uh, obviously a tough spot to be in here. Nobody out. First and second, one run in already. So to walk, an error to hit. Now 3 0 count, make it ball four, bases loaded. The second walk in the inning. And now we will have the pitching change as Charlie Hutchinson does indeed follow Merrick out of the dugout. So that's the uh, that's it for Gooley. Strong effort from the lefty. We'll take a break and come back, introduce Hutchinson, who is brought into the game with bases loaded, nobody out. Tough spot. Be right back on PrepSpotlight.tv. All summer long, you have gathered with friends, neighbors, and family at ball yards all across Minnesota. Still going, still going, gone, a home run. Diamonds that decorate and help define hundreds of communities. Town Ball binds together our passion for baseball in our hometowns. And on September 11th, the cornerstone of Minnesota baseball, Target Field, will host a party for all those who play, watch, and support Town Ball. The Twins host the Royals at 6.10 p.m. Prior to the game, the newly crowned state amateur champs will be honored at the Town Ball Tavern and during a pregame ceremony. Wear your team colors and enjoy a special night at Target Field. The 0-2 pitch, strike three, Fairmont, state champion in 2020. For tickets to the Twins' tip of the cap to Town Ball on September 11th, Visit twinsbaseball.com slash townball. Bottom seven as we come back to live action here in Hamburg. Low Gators turning to the bullpen. Charlie Hutchinson, the lefty. And Charlie, a college teammate of Gustavus with Ethan Mockey, the catcher. And welcome to the state tournament, Charlie. He appears for the first time, steps in with bases loaded infield in. One run in already. And now it's Ben Lavorsi, the left-handed hitting catcher who came in as a defensive replacement. Ben, normally the starting catcher, played earlier. So now it's a capable backup started the game. And then they bring in Lavorsi into this spot. And he's up in a big spot here for the first time. 0-1 count. Hutchinson, that one. Spins out. Maki says, I like it. Don't worry. Keep working it. And 1-1 one, one the count. One, 1-1 one pitch. Strike two. Good spot from Hutchinson. So there's only one hit in the inning. It was a walk and error 
Then the single, an RBI single from Riley Johnson. Another walk. And now Lavorsi after the pitching change. One two count. Hutchinson delivers. It's high two and two. Strike three called. What a pitch. It's Hutchinson. Had that one curved back over the plate. Lavorsi is down. One out. Now it's Kleppner coming to the plate. Kleppner, the second baseman, singled his last time up. No one on the count, Kleppner. And the Champlin Park head basketball coach, Champlin Park High School, taking on Champlin Park here in the tournament. Takes a strike from Hutchinson. 1-1 one, one count. Inside gets away from Maki. One run, trying to score the pitch to Hutchinson. Not in time. And coming in and scoring on the play is the pinch runner, Drush. So he scores it. And it's now six to four. Every runner moves up, second and third now, one out. And that one got away from Maki, so still a big spot for Kleppner. Takes away the force out as well. So Champlin trying to minimize damage at this point. Two one pitch. That one's driven to the outfield. It could drop. Hoyer is charging. He will not get there. It drops. Pooter up with it. One run is in. An RBI single from Kleppner. And Chan has wrestled control away in this contest again as it's a three-run advantage. Three runs in in the inning. Seven to four now. And Anderson, who is a Good base runner mentioned he has shown some, some heady base running and some decent speed for his size. Was on second, but they had to hold up. We've seen so many great plays from outfielders, but that one dropping too fast. Hoyer couldn't get there. Just the second hit in the inning. And Justin Arnold tries to keep things moving. Rips that one to Riola, to Nelson. And over to first, so the 6-4-3 double play. The Champlin ends up getting out of it, but damage done. Redbirds regain the lead. They're up three as we head to the eighth inning in Hamburg. Redbirds, three runs on two hits. Town ball tour, head to the small towns and tell people what it's all about. A lot of excitement, weather is fantastic. This place has been here since the early 80s. This is a baseball town. The town is here, the kids are here. It's safe, it's a wonderful environment. We certainly met some wonderful characters. Thanks for joining us for another season of Fox 9's Town Ball Tour. changes for the Redbirds. Now pitching Logan Spitzak. Zach Hoffman re-enters. As you may have heard over the PA, Logan Spitzak in for the Redbirds. No good effort from Thomas Thompson. Seven innings for him. Four hits. Or eight hits, excuse me, four runs. And it's Logan Spitzak 
in in relief. Logan pitched in the first game against Moorhead. We'll get those numbers up here in a second. In the meantime, Spitzak set to face the top of the order, Sam Riola. Spitzak, 41 innings pitched. Did start six games, appeared in 11, a 3 0 record, and an ERA below one. So that's what you get here in this stellar bullpen and this pitching staff from Chan Essen. Thompson battled hard. Chan offense doing enough. And a strike called on Riola. All outside, one and one. Strike two dropped in. Spitzak continues to work that outside corner. Riola has yet to offer it anything. Two and two the count. So Logan has pitched one inning in the opener against Moorhead. Came in a relief of John Straka. Struck out two, did surrender two hits and a run. And then tasked Trying to uh, hold the gate here against Champlin in the late innings after the low Gators battled back to tie things in the top of the fifth inning. Strike three called on Rioli. He's got to be careful here. He and the umpire were having a conversation earlier. And Sam, an emotional player. Not too excited about that call. Batting with one away, center fielder Jack Puder. One down, now it's Jack Puder. RBI single last time up for Jack. Part of that big fifth inning. First pitch swinging. Foul ball 0 and 1. So Spitzak also did not play last year uh, due to COVID. He had a new baby last year, so precautions were taken as Pooter, good stroke there. Sharp single in the left. Back-to-back -back hits for Pooter. One on, one out. Better is the catcher, Ethan. Mach Gonna bring up Ethan. Two hits on the day for Ethan. RBI single back in the first. Maki. Again, having a nice tournament here. Now Spitzak, another teacher on this roster, an elementary teacher. He's actually uh, listed as the number three starter. So if you need a third starter, between Straka and Thompson, this is your guy, but obviously he works out of the bullpen well as, as well. Strike one to Maki. Spitzak, all tournament team in 18 and 19. No one pitch to Maki. Drops in for strike two, 0 and 2. Now Spitzak trying to hit that corner again. Lavorsi set up on the outside, just misses. One and two the count. That one to the left side, going to be a tough play. It's knocked down. Still a chance for a throw. Not in time. Good hustle by Maki. We're going to have our first error on Chan Hassan. Georgella. Not able to make the play. Will be the right fielder, Jeff Hoyer. 
So Maki reaches via the air. And Champlin has something cooking here now with two on and one out. And Jeff Hoyer, by the way, still looking for a hit. Trying to make something happen for him out of that four spot in the lineup. Swats at that one to second. Kleppner goes to Arnold. Back to first. And the relay's in time. Hoyer upset, tosses the helmet deep into right field. But the double play erases the threat, and Chan Assen holds on to the three-run lead here in Hamburg. Once again, great defense on display. This time the Redbirds getting it done. A little frustration boiling over here for the low Gators. Head to the bottom of the eighth. Do up top of the order for Chan Asin. For over 33 years, EPS has been helping communities like Chaska and Chanhassen build projects on budget and on time. The EPS employees are people who bring excellence to their customers' commercial projects and will do what they say they will do. Visit their website, electricalproduction.com, to learn more about the many skills they have to offer. for Chan Hassan. In the bottom of the eighth will be left fielder Aaron Papp. Hutchinson out for second inning of relief. Bottom of the eighth, top of the order, Aaron Paff. Back up. Again, Aaron scored those two runs. In the first and second inning, 101 the count right now. Strike called, two and two. Count is full. Come on, Charlie. That one banged out the left side. Count remains full. And the walk to lead things off. And bring up the manager, Brandon Arnold. Manager shortstop. Playing great at short is Brandon. Having a nice game here, three for four. And uh, robbed in left field. It was a foul ball, actually, but highlight real play by Heldman banging into the fence over there. Robbing Brandon of a chance. Perhaps his fourth hit in the game. Now an opportunity with nobody out and one on. Sun beginning to set over right field. You can see the shadows. 
Long shadows now out there. Takes the strike from Hutchinson. As of now, it's Charlie's game for the Gators. Nobody warming in the bullpen. Relieve Jerry Gooley, last inning. Got out of a pretty big spot as well as Arnold tries to go up the middle. Riola makes the play at second. Wow. His athletic ability on display again as he dives and makes that play and then pounces on second to tag the bag. Forces out half for the first out. Arnold is on with the fielder's choice, and Michael Gergella comes up. Michael with nine total bases here today. Three run homer back in the first, then a single, then a sacrifice fly, and he walked and scored his last time up. So he's officially two for two. With three RBI, two runs scored, and nine total bases. Have a day. 0 1 the count. Gergella looking at. Um, Grabbing player of the game honors at this point, I would say. Check on Arnold over at first. Brandon has been known to stay active on the base pass. And I'll check on him again. Gergella gets underneath that one, skies it to the left side. Riola's out there coming in, though, and calling him off is Haldeman. The high fly to left. They finally retire Gergella. Two outs now, and Zach Huffman will step in. Zach reached on an error and scored his last time up. 0 for 4. Trying to crack the code and get in the hit column here. Hutchinson continues to look strong in relief here. Drops in strike one. Looks like Spitzak will be the man to come out, try to close things down here in the top of the ninth inning. As Hoffman, unsure of himself on that swing, 0-2. Hutchinson trying to make quick work of Hoffman. Pitches high, one and two. <laughs> one, two pitch. High again, two and two. Bottom of the eighth, Champlin up seven to four. Or Chan Hassan, excuse me, up seven to four over Champlin. And they've got the pickoff move at first. And did Riola get over there in time? No. Sam's not going to like that call, but Arnold able to scoot over. So again, Arnold picked off earlier as well. And Merrick's going to come out and talk things over. Going to go in the st uh, a stolen base in the books for Brandon. He was caught. Hutchinson had him picked off. Riola having a little conversation with Brandon Arnold back there. Merrick done discussing it with the umpire. Call will not change. So now for Hutchinson, it's a matter of bearing down here on the batter. 
Zach Huffman, 2-2 two -two count, two out. Arnold on second. And Hoffman just hangs in there. Remember earlier in the game, Justin Arnold on third, Brandon on first. Brandon in a similar situation. The throw came to Riola, who had the choice of chasing after Brandon and trying to make the play. Or cutting down Justin before he would score, perhaps before the out was applied. So he cut him down at home, and it was a headsy play. Keeping Chan off the board in that inning. Look even more brilliant after Champlin came back and tied it at four. Chan has since regained the lead. Now full count on Huffman. Lefty Hutchinson. It's in there and fouled off again. Zach working on good at bad here. Still a full count. Hutchinson delivers. A little bit inside. Hoffman turns on it, fouls it down the third baseline. And Hutchinson and Maki. The catcher, teammates of Gustavus. Saw their teammate Jack Garrison. Yesterday against Victoria. Hoffman grounds that to Riola. Takes the bounce, makes the throw on the run. Right on the money to Connolly. So Champlin is out of the inning. Down to their final three outs, trailing it 7-4 to four as we head to the ninth. Live on PrepSpotlight.tv. Nobody does high school sports like PrepSpotlight.tv. Your home for Minnesota State Tournament action is also where you can find the best weekly action during the regular season in 2021. We make it easy to be a high school sports fan at PrepSpotlight.tv. Last call for Champlin. Top of the ninth inning. We expected this to be a good game. It's had times of dominance on both sides. Bigger innings. Three the magic number. Three runs for Champlin in the top of the fifth. Three runs for Chan in the bottom of the first and in the bottom of the seventh. Also three errors for Champlin on the scoreboard as well. Here is Ryan Bruns stepping in against Logan Spitzak. Gets the call in the outside corner. Bruns 0 for 3 on the day. Mentioned again, these two met in the first round a couple years back. 2019 to be exact, a one nothing first round victory for the Redbirds. And they've seen a lot of close victories through the years here. Trying to trace down this four-peat. One-two count now on Bruns. Spitzak, inside pitch, drilled off of his foot it looks like. Well, Brunsy 
Hits the deck. That does not feel good. Spitzak on his second inning of relief. Number two starter Thomas Thompson battled it out. Seven strong innings. Champlin did touch him up a bit. They have their chance here, but again, this Chanhassen squad, they just kind of seem to get done whatever they need to get done and when they need to do it. Now they've pieced it together here in this uh, dynasty run. Again, the winner plays Meesville. The Mudhens look great through three games in the tournament. Right back here Friday night in Hamburg. Loser drops to the loser's bracket. It'll play in Waconia on Saturday as Brandon Arnold with a defensive jam. The backhand spin throws out Bruns at first. And the defense continues to shine here for both sides. Bryce Nelson now up with one out. Champlin's had its chances here. Nine hits on the day. 11 for Chan Assen. Fairly even matched throughout. Just a couple big plays and big errors. Spitzak fires a strike and another one. 0 2 now. Nelson has one hit and a run scored. That back in that three run fifth inning. No two pitch outside, one and two. He's been getting calls out there, but that one a little bit too far outside. Fights it off. Arnold will have another chance for a play. Throws on the run. Right on the money to Huffman. He put out. Nice plays by Arnold. And Reed Conley now as Chaplin is down to its final out. Conley also singled and scored back in the fifth inning. Check swing, and it's just foul. Wow, that was close. And that would have been uh, giving up without a fight because Conley was about two steps out of the box. That one got down to first pretty quickly. Zach Huffman scooped it up. When it crosses over the bag, just foul. No one won the count. And there's Spitzak hitting his spot, 0-2, going right after the hitters here at the top of the ninth inning. O2 oh, pitch, fought off. This time it's fair to Huffman. Huffman says, I'll take it myself. And Chan Hassan continues to roll. Two games, two victories for the Redbirds here this Sunday. And they move on. The winner's bracket. They'll play Meesville next Friday right back here in Hamburg. So let's recap. This contest in the top of the first, Sam Riola, leadoff single, then scored all the way from first on Ethan Mockey's hit down the third baseline. Remember, he ran through that stop sign, had the play at the plate. Um, that's just Sam being Sam, but forcing the action and giving the locators a quick lead here on the three-time defending champs. But in the bottom of the first, um, Aaron Paff and Brandon Arnold reach on singles, and then the three-run homer from Drugella, Michael Bashes one over the left field fence for the 3-1 lead. Just three batters into the game for Chan Hassan. In the bottom of the second, after the first two were retired, Paff was hit by a pitch, and he later would score on the Brandon Arnold RBI single. So it was 4-1 after two. Top of the fifth, Champlin comes back to life. Five hits, including an RBI single from Heldman. Michael Dudella with a three-run home run. And uh, the rally for the Gators, uh, Pooter, also with an RBI single. The rally time for the Gators, they tied it up at four at that point in the bottom of the seventh. A uh, walk, an error, 
a hit in a walk. That's how things started for Chan. Then RBI singles for uh, Johnson and Kleppner. Also a pass ball leading to a run. 7-4. Chan was back in command. Logan Spitzak comes in in relief. Uh, Thomas Thompson who went the first seven. Logan shuts it down, and there you see the final numbers. Even almost on the hits. Three errors for Champlin. And it's Chan Hassan getting out with the 7-4 victory. So as mentioned, it'll be Meesville uh, taking on Chan Hassan. That is next week right back here on Friday night in Hamburg. And in the loser's bracket, Saturday, a late afternoon game in Waconia. It'll be Newmarket taking on Champlin. The winner then turns around and plays the loser of the Friday night game. So bring your pitchers and get ready to go in this double elimination bracket. Um, and by the way, the championship game would then be Sunday, September 5th in Chaska. And if the uh, lose the, uh, the team that hadn't lost yet wins, so if we're forced to play two games in the championship, that would be a Monday night, Monday afternoon game in Chaska, a 3 p.m. scheduled start there. So there's, there's your bracket and another eventful day here in Class B that'll wrap up another weekend here in Hamburg. We thank you so much for joining us for live action on PrepSpotlight.tv. Uh, for Brian Carlson on camera, I am Eric Murphy. Have a great rest of your night, everybody, and we'll see you back here on Friday night. Amateur baseball is one of Minnesota's great sporting traditions. The state tournament brings together hundreds of communities in late summer at great ballparks all around the state. Coverage of every game can be found on PrepSpotlight.tv. PrepSpotlight.tv's coverage of today's state tournament game is made possible by the Minnesota Baseball Association. And also with help from the Minnesota Twins. Celebrate Town Ball with the Twins on September 11th. Visit TwinsBaseball.com slash Town Ball for details. Now let's get to the ballpark.